Hey, what's up guys? Brian Savage here with you. I'm going to shoot a couple videos today. First off, I'm going to do an unboxing. Now, I've already opened this up because I wanted to check it out first to make sure it was uh, kind of up to par. And I know that's a spoiler, but uh, I believe on my channel I'm only going to do things that I like and I support. I don't want to spread negative. There's enough negative in the world. I think I've said this before. I only want to do positive things. So, um, and you never know. So, what I got here, ta-da, ta-da. A guitar kit. Now, I've built several guitars in my day. I don't even know how many. Um, I've built a couple kits, and um, I've built them from scratch, which is my preferred method, although um, I don't have a lot of the tooling to do some of the more intricate things that are, I mean, I, d I do, but I don't kind of thing for some of the, th the things you can do. Um, for instance, necks, profiling a neck, getting it just right. You know, there's a lot of templates and jigs to, to do a lot of that. And um, I've done it, and it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. So usually when I build a guitar now, it's because someone's requested and says, I want this guitar, and I want it in this collar with this kind of wood, and, um, and I put it together for them. But... Uh, this kit here <clears throat> um, came from thefretwire.com and this is the same company from which I purchased the DIY pedals that I built in uh, a delay and an overdrive. Um, and I was really impressed with their customer service, their, their shipping, their quality of what they were doing. Um, I thought it was on mark with... Uh, what else you could get in the industry and at a price of a little under without just doing some kind of direct Chinese import kind of stuff and I'm not really a kind of the guy for that but so anyway that's who it's from and uh, this is the instruction sheet and uh, I'm going to do a complete build series on this guitar I'm going to build the you know from unboxing today we're going to go through some of the parts um, and we're going to go through and these instructions, when they say basic instructions, they do mean basic instructions. If you're a first time builder, this is, would be a good kit for a first time builder, but understand you're going to need, if you have no knowledge of how to build a guitar, you're going to need to do more research than what comes in this instruction sheet. You just are. Um, the reason this is a good first timer kit, and if you're a first timer, this might be some of the things you look for in a kit. Um, sorry, um, it's all pre drilled. In other words, when I say all pre drilled in the body, the neck pocket is already cut, pre drilled for the neck screws. Pickup or the uh, pick guard screws already pre drilled. The bridge screws already pre-drilled for the wiring, the route, the wiring from this pickup into this cavity, into this cavity, and the ground lead to go from underneath your bridge into the control cavity, down to the four screws that hold on the jack plate, and the strap button screws. It's all done for you. Um, so that's great, and that's great if you're a first-timer, get something like that. Um, but be careful. You can get a lot of different kits out there, and they're made. I've gotten good ones, and I've gotten bad ones. And what I mean by good ones and bad ones is unless you're going to spend enough to buy a high-quality guitar uh, finished from a major brand label, um, you would have to spend the five $600 range on a kit to get one that is going to be flawless, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> now, the things that that 
you know, if any of these things have been done incorrectly, they got the jig on it wrong and it's done incorrectly, it can throw off the string spacings, your intonation, all these kind of things. Um, but this one here, done pretty good. I've measured it out even, and we'll do that as we go along. But again, this is unboxing. Show you the neck. The neck is maple on maple, two piece. Maple on maple, two piece. So the fretboard's one piece and the back's one piece. Pretty good looking grain. I know it's going to be kind of hard to make out, possibly. Um, finish on it, not bad, not bad at all. Um, there, I mean, the, the finished sand, I should say. You will have to sand this and sand and sand and sand this. Uh, the top is a one piece this way. It's not two pieces book matched. It's one piece, but it is a three ply. I don't know if you'll even be able to make it out, but if you look in the pick, guard cavity you'll see it's a three ply laminate solid all the way through the hollow goes about like that right there is what's hollow underneath of it you can look up here actually it's about right like that there is the hollow portion um, F holes cut pretty nice the finish on it's nice now the back I believe they say this is ash um, it was really pretty. You won't be able to make it out, I'm sure, but, uh, yeah, because there's no finish on it. But this is, this is flame. There's some flaming all through this. Uh, some pretty nice flaming looking. So, um, but around the edge, mm, not very finished sanded at all. It's very, very scratchy. This is where you're going to spend probably most of your time sanding is going to be around this here because you are in the end grain. It's tough to sand and they just simply don't spend that much time doing it on these kits. Um, but this one's pretty good, but we're still gonna have to start, I'd say at least 120 grit on this edge. Uh, the top, I will skip to probably 400 and just do a finish, get the fuzz fuzz fill off of it. I'll do a 400. I'm going to do a dye and then do a, a rubs uh, finish on it. Uh, true oil, Danish oil, French polish, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I know they're all different, but they're all pretty much the same method um, is what we're going to do. But we're going to dye it first. We're going to leave the maple of the neck on there and we're going to dye this the same color as the top and the back. And I do believe around this band here, and I'll let it creep over the bevel, I'm going to paint it a solid color. I'm thinking like a blue-green, turquoise -y type thing. Um, pick guard. Now, this is one thing that you'll find real quick, the quality and how much time they've spent on their kit, just by the pick guard they put in. You will see sometimes that they will be just butchered in the way they are cut. Just horrible. This one has one tiny little place where it kind of bumps out and isn't perfect. And that isn't noticeable unless you're really feeling for it and looking for it on the guitar. That little piece wouldn't even be noticed, but I will go ahead and sand that little bump down. Um, <clears throat> I've seen them horrible, 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 horrible. And uh, the, I'd put that against anything that uh, comes out of Mexico on an F-type right there uh, as far as pick guards go um, pickups humbuckers um, <clears throat> here's one thing that I found out that uh, you know to say back to the company uh, also for you to be aware of they're not marked as neck or bridge they are not in the wiring diagram. It doesn't say, even though one has one has a yellow wire, one has a red wire. It doesn't say anything about the collars. So if you didn't, this is where, if you don't know anything about building kits or building guitars, this might be a, a, a little snag for you and you might mess up. You can tell bridge from the, uh, the bridge from the neck pickup when they're sort of in this configuration a couple different ways. Um, 
if they done it right from the factory, if you see the thickness and the taper, thin to thicker taper on that, and then flip it around here. You see how much thicker this one is, and it tapers still though, thinner to thicker. That means that they want this pickup ring to be the, the neck. It needs to have a, a lower profile. And you need to put it the smaller taper towards the headstock. And then the thicker one with the smaller taper again towards the headstock. Thicker taper towards the bridge would be the bridge pickup. Now that's if they've loaded it into these surrounds correctly from the factory. What I did was I put it on my ohms meter and measured the resistance. And I don't know if you can see it there. I wrote on it with a Sharpie. 12.5K ohms of resistance and 10.5K ohms of resistance. The higher the resistance, typically all things being equal, will be the hotter pickup. And typically what someone will want is the hotter pickup in the bridge position. Again, that is all horses for courses. Everyone has their own, you know, preferences. And some people like, you know, doing the out of phase switching and all this and all that, you know, but standard. We're talking about industry standard, if you will. That's the way it's going to be set up. And these were in the pit guards um, or in the surrounds. They were loaded with the correct values. So the, the thicker pickup pick, pick surround is is for the bridge and the thinner one for the neck. Um, the hotter pickup would be towards the bridge. Um, the other thing is, is you know, there's pole pieces only on one side of the humbucker and you go, well, should it be both the pole pieces face towards the, the bridge, both face towards the neck, is one this way, one that way, how do you do it? Uh, again, you can look by the taper if they've been loaded right, but the correct way should be is neck pickup faces the pole pieces should face towards the headstock and on the bridge pickup the pole pieces should face towards the bridge. Uh, gives you the most distance between them so you can have the greatest tonal variation, supposedly. What I was told once in elementary school, who knows, uh, the headstock is just what they call paddle cut. So you get to cut your own design into this whether you want to get a template and do a F type or go crazy and do your own. Uh, it is pre-drilled for the tuners as well as the holes on the back to mount tuners on the back as well. Um, so it is pre-drilled for that. It's even pre-drilled for the string trees. Those two little things there, the string trees. And they do supply those. Uh, it also came with a um, <laughs> a truss rod cover and a flat truss rod, almost uh, LP style truss rod cover. I think that just comes in their standard bag of uh, vacuum sealed parts. And there it is, along with the capacitor, some solder, the screws. Um, so... I've took a, a, an inventory and made note and uh, there are some things here that I do have an issue with as far as screws go. There is only four screws. Oh no, that's correct. So that's, yeah, okay. I just noticed something. They put pickup rings on these. And these don't need pickup rings. They don't use pickup rings. They mount into the pick guard. So, these four screws right here, I don't even... I guess I'll find what they go to, but they wouldn't go to screwing in a pickup. Screwing down a pickup. I guess it's to give you the option if you wanted to do something... Well, no, it's already pre-drilled for this thing, so... Well, looks like I just got a free set of pickup rings, and I just noticed that along with you. Um, so, it would be great if they did put the value on these pickups. That would be a good thing for them to do for the first-timer. And a lot of times, first-time builders, they buy a kit. 
Uh, the potentiometers, what can I say? Uh, they're the small Chinese potentiometers. I, you know what? I don't really have a problem with them. I, I haven't had a problem with them. Uh, they, they're just not going to have the longevity of, say, something like a Bourne's Pot or an Alpha even. Um, but, you know, again, when I say longevity, I'm talking to get 20, 30 years out of a out, out of a pot like you would like a Bourne's or something like that. Uh, the switch, it's one of them printed circuit board jobbies. It's just, it's a three position switch, but it almost feels like there's an in-between position on it. Um, it's a really long throw. It's stiff. I'm sure it works. Um, again, but that's another thing that a good USA made switchcraft switch lasts you 30 years. This one might last you three. Um, Jack looks just fine and dandy, although I do see an issue right now with this Jack. I don't know how big this hole is. Let's see here. Let's see if I'm right. Because they pre-drilled this body already. Let's see if these line up. Nope. Not really. Solder lugs are kind of getting in the way too, but I don't think those screws are going to line up. So, we may have to address that issue. Before I finish this, I will address that issue. And what I'll do is I'll just toothpick these holes, cut it off flat, sand it. It's going to get covered anyway. And then I'll paint it. You'll never see it anyway. And then it gets covered with the jack back up anyway. And I'll, I'll fit the jack and drill it. I would imagine this was just a template stuck in the hole when they drilled around it. And it's not quite right. So... Uh, the pick guard, though, I did line it up, and every hole around the pick guard lines up just beautifully, and that's really good, so that, none of that will be crooked. Uh, the cavities, pickup cavities, are deep enough to fit the long screws without having to nip those off. That's something else to be aware of. Uh, if your pick, <laughs> that's something, yeah, give you a little tri tricky tip there. If your pickup cavity is not deep enough for the pickups you have you can take a little nib you know little snippers something like these right here and snip off the ends of those bolts that's the longest portion if you're really thick in your body and it's kind of really shallow here and you have the hardware the, the little leg that sticks down on it and all that's hidden you got room, make sure you measure, make sure you got room. Just take you a larger drill bit that's just a, uh, you know, say, oh, I don't know, maybe 7 16 something, and drill you a little bit of a hole down just a little bit. Be careful, don't drill through your body. And make some room for them versus trying to route out this entire cavity more. If you're just lacking a little bit, little trick for you. Uh, I usually take a drill bit, stick it in there, and just give it a little bit of it, and then I take a chisel and nice, sharp, small chisel and square off the hole. Um, yeah, so, uh, strap buttons, the other parts, typical, it's the regular pressed, bent string trees, although they do have the short and tall little barrels uh, to step the string trees. Some of them just put them in there. The saddles look to be, I mean, they're the high mass saddles. They look to be nice Allen keys, hex keys, whatever you want to call them. It is not a string through the body, although the bridge does make it to where you could string through the body. Um, that would be nice to do. I'm not going to do that to this because I like the back uh, the way it is, but you could definitely string 
drill through, get you some ferrules, pop them in the back, and do a string through the body with this kit. The bridge is capable of it, and it is solid there, all solid wood down through here. So you can string through the body. Um, knobs, just chrome knobs. You have one volume, one tone. Tuning keys, they are sealed. Tuning keys, they're no name brand. NHR1. Uh, let's see what else they say. R1, R3. Let me see here, are they staggered? Yes, they are. So when you look at these tuners, they are staggered. R2. R means they're right-handed. I'm sure. That's an R1. It's an R2. R3. R3. R1. And R1. So you have the R3 is the shortest, I believe. Yeah. Shortest R1s are longest. So what you do, um, there's different theories on this, but I go short, 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 you know, get shorter to longer because you got string trees. Some people do the opposite for string tension. Some people put the longest ones on the B, E, and the, the, these four will put them on there uh, because they do have the trees to hold them down. And some people put long ones on here to make more or less of a break angle. Personally, I want the break angle, so I put the shortest one here. So it'll be R3. Well, there was two, two R3. So I'll go R3, R3, R2, and there was three R1s. Our ones were longest. Um, neck plate comes with a cord, set of Allen key, hex keys, a couple sprouts of wire here to do your do all your deal, and even a set of strings. Hang on just a second, guys. The strings look to be dun, 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 dun. tens, probably ten to forty. Well, that's going to be fun to try to uncoil. Ten to forty two. Strings that come with it. Uh, I'll probably throw nines on it. Ernie Ball, Super Slinkies. Yes, Ernie Ball, Super Slinkies. That's my string, except for my Les Pauls. My Les Paul scale links, I like a little bit bigger string. I tune down half a step when I play live most of the time. So uh, on the shorter scale length guitar, I prefer tens. So. This guitar is going to be a standard pitch guitar, and that's important to know as I'm setting it up as well. But um, be a standard regular pitch guitar. And um, for the fretwire.com, to them I say, um, like it if you marked on these, whether they were bridge or neck. Uh, it would be advantageous because in your instructions you say things well we'll get to that when we get to the wiring um, what else can we say uh, good job I mean it was packaged really well in all kinds of um, this kind of stuff and paper and it was a box in a box and all that stuff so no damage from shipping 
I don't think you're going to run any risk of damage to shipping. Uh, as far as the fit and finish, um, the, uh, I, the, the, the not putting the pickup on this or kind of making the instructions a little clearer or more in depth is a personal preference thing and not entirely necessary. There was one issue that I had that was absolutely entirely necessary to address. And uh, I, uh, I already kind of fixed it, but I haven't fixed it all the way yet. Because I was fixing I thought, well, I better, I better video it. And I'll go ahead and do an unboxing and video of it. And I waited to the end to even say anything about this. Because, again, the negative. It looks better now. But whenever... One, loose is a, it's not a real tight, tight fit, which on T-types, they're usually not a real tight fit anyway because you don't have much purchase on this side. It doesn't come very far up the neck to hold it. So, not real concerned about that. But the neck pocket, absolutely flat, fits great. But I know you couldn't make it out. But it, and it was a lot more pronounced. This was very, this part where it fits in the neck pocket, very crowned. I could put it in the neck pocket and go blip, 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 blip. Not good. <laughs> this has to fit. You want as much of this, touching as much of this as you possibly can. And I like it to touch all of it if I can. Um, be careful doing this because these are fitted pieces. This, this was numbered 15 and this was numbered 15, 14 on this and a 14 on this. So this stuff is kind of, they do pre-fit this pit guard to the body and the neck to the body. They are pre-fit, but it needed a little bit more attention to detail across this here. First timers aren't going to know to look for that. And your guitar will never, ever, 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 ever be stable if, if you don't have a good fit in your neck pocket. It just won't. Um, you'll end up where it doesn't have as much purchase. The neck will move around more. You'll get finished cracks in places along here and along here. Uh, it can just end up being a lot of bad stuff. So that's got to fit flat in this neck pocket. It's got to touch this. Now, you can put a little shim in here to get get a better neck angle if you don't have enough. This actually, the neck angle was really good. So I was very meticulous how I took this down. I actually used a uh, precision ground scraper and did it. Um, need to do a little more on it, but not too much more. So anyway, this has been long enough. I've rambled on. Um, all in all, Definitely a good thing to do. Now stick around guys because uh, again I'm going to do a complete build on this and I got a big surprise coming at the end of the build. So please subscribe, like, share the videos. Uh, if, you do, if you're interested in doing something like this, if you have any questions about something like this, uh, you know, leave me a comment. Ask me questions. I, I don't care to help out anybody out there doing it. Uh, there's a world of resources out there for you from to build one from scratch. Um, I just watched uh, one of the guys I follow on YouTube and have for years, um, Ben Crow of Crimson Guitars. Uh, he just built a guitar in 12 hours and videoed the whole series. It was pretty, pretty intense, and that was from raw blanks of wood. So um, if you can watch somebody do that, you can watch somebody do anything on any of these. But I'm going to go ahead and build this one. I'm going to make it uh, the other videos that I shoot on it as I build it are going to be probably a little more technical. We're going to have a lot of measuring devices. By the way, I also got these from thefretwire.com. Uh, the one I had like this was a thinner one from another company. And I shut it in my drawer and bent the tar out of it. So I had to get a new one. String action. And you can't measure, well, I mean, I guess you can, but this sure makes it easy measuring string height. And their rule set also came with this radius gauge. Got the different neck radiuses on it. So 
you can see what your radius is on your neck. Curvature. Make sure you match your saddles on your bridge to it. That kind of stuff. Uh, we'll get to that when we set it up as well. The frets on it. Man, that's, that, good job, guys. That That's a big one there. Man, the frets. I've gotten kits where if I did this right here, my fingers would be bleeding and there's no cuts at all. They're nice. Nice. That is the most impressive part of it. Anyway, guys, we'll measure everything out, get out all the measuring tools, make sure we're setting this thing up ideally perfect, and kind of do uh, a mock fit up. And then we will uh, break it down again, and we'll do the finish. And after we do the finish, we will do the, uh, the build, and that'll be include the wiring, loading the pick guard, every single part of it is going to be part of it so to speak so share the music share the love peace out